Hi everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Warren Bennett. We've got Trev mooching around the garden somewhere, currently doing some recycling with some twigs down there. And today's video is all about trying to get this club in the slot. Now I've done previous videos, not that long ago actually, to give you kind of a feeling of that. Now we're going to kind of go on and hit some balls. I'm going to show you a golf swing that you can really kind of I'd say copy is the wrong word, but you can really try to blend in one of her movements that can really help you too, especially if you're an over the topper. Now copying a lady golfer kind of has more relevance, doesn't it? You can kind of understand a little bit more. You know, there are other golfers that say Rory McIlroy, you know, if you can mind's eye Rory swing, you can kind of see him dropping it in the slot a little bit. But Rory's kind of, you look at him and think, wow, he's just like another level. But someone like a lady golfer, you can kind of understand it a little bit more, can't you? Because it's obviously the pace is a little bit less, albeit still quite quick. Um, but I'm going to show you an element of Charlie Hole Swing that you can blend into your game. So you don't have to move Trev at the moment, so hopefully he's a little bit safe behind the danger zone there. Get the front camera set up and we'll see you in a bit. OK, so I'm going to play a few swings of Charlie Hole. Now you can see she creates a lot of speed and... It's quite athletic, but I think there's a reason for that. Now, especially if you're an over-the-topper, as you know, a million times you've probably heard it before, especially if you've kind of looked on YouTube, you know your hands and club are coming over here. Now you can see with Charlie's swing, there's a, a transition where she drops it really under her, and that gives her the kind of the, the green light for really getting everything through the ball. And you can see she really kind of gets kind of moving a bottom half really gets firing and there's no holding back because obviously on the ladies tour if you can hit it a long way and I'm guessing I've never seen her hit a golf ball but I'm guessing looking at it she looks like she can get it out there a long way but I think and whether she's worked on this in the previous I don't know but you can see from you know the slow-mo I'm going to do here with her you can see from halfway halfway back to kind of halfway down there's a definite change of her hand and arm position so you can see on the backswing it's quite steep and her hands are quite wide and this is what I'd like you to do so today's video is all about trying to get the transition of your hands out in front of you to halfway down behind you now if you're a hooker of the ball don't do that because the hooker of the ball, you kind of want to feel like the club's coming probably a little bit outside and, the, and you want to hold it off and, and hold that spin off. But the majority of you guys want to create a little bit more power, a little bit more speed. And to do that, if you can get your club and your hands, more importantly, and your arm, so your left arm and your hand, you can see halfway down there, halfway down meaning left arm parallel, you can see from the front view, you want this you want your hands the middle of your hands you can see with a line you want it behind your shoulder line you don't want it out here you do if you want to create a fade or a straighter shot but it's a feel and real thing especially if you're an over the topper so let's get into it so it's like a little lasso movement here you can see what charlie does so let's just hit a few so what i'm feeling here is the back swing is going to be quite wide now in a perfect world you take it slightly on the inside but i would like you to feel like you're taking it a little bit straighter really wide and then from about three quarters of the way up i want you to feel this kind of drop and really squeeze this left arm into your chest so left my left arm now as you can see probably from the behind view more than the front view now you can really see it gives me the room to drop so really stretch, I'm not moving my head with it. I'm coiling, keeping my head still, but really stretching away. So it's nice and light still, but now that's giving me the room to really squeeze my left arm across my chest there. And you can see, look, it's exaggerated and it's probably a bit further down than halfway, but it's really giving me the effect now. How am I gonna get that club to the ball? It's gonna come from the inside and gonna hit a draw. Right, let's try one. especially if this is new and you can see I've got the flight scope just running here a little bit of a draw there which is nice if this is new to you take a bit of pace off and I got a comment a couple of videos ago I think hit like a wedge or a nine iron you don't have to go I've got a six iron here keep it nice and wide and then you're really trying to kind of get this hand and club as far 
back behind you as you can. You can see that's so exaggerated it's crazy, but you can see probably from the front view my right elbow is under my left now. If my hands start coming over the top or out towards that front camera, you can see my right arm starts to get dominant. So the more your hands are behind here, the more you can kind of let go as much as you can. And you can see that with Charlie's swing. The more you get this club in the slot or even more behind the slot, you can really then unleash everything at it without the fear of kind of manipulation. Okay, let's try another one. Remember, if it's new, don't worry about it. If it gets a little bit weird or not perfect to start with, give yourself a dozen balls to get used to it. So really out and back. A little bit fat, that wasn't the best strike in the world because it's all about movement, but you can't create movement and let go if you're in the wrong position coming down, especially if you're over the top, that's for sure. All right, a few more practice swings. So out, really wide and short. See, I'm twisted, so I'm still creating some coil and some power there, but really drop. You can do this kind of movement here where you're exaggerating as much as you can. You can drop your hands down a little bit more if you want and really make it a lot. If you want to hook the ball, that's what you're going to do. And you can see what that does, that movement of your hands going really behind you, it's about as far as I can go with my right elbows hitting my side, that is really closing me off, you can see from the behind view. Now you don't have to do it too much, that's exaggerated. But I like exaggeration because the old statement of feel a mile to gain an inch, and that's kind of what you've got to do, especially if you're at the extreme version of coming over the top. Right, let's do another one. Really feel like my hands are going to go right behind me as much as I can. That was okay. It's definitely going to start right. I'm not striking it right yet. So if this is you, you can probably put it on a tee if you like as well. Get an eight iron, just clip a few. You don't, need, you don't actually, well, let me go and get a kind of a nine iron and show you. Right, I've got a nine iron here. So we're just going to take a bit of pace off. Don't have to strike it perfectly. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. Nice and slow, out, around. Remember the second half of this video is going to be all about how you let go and release as well. Okay, as much as I can, I'm going to slow this down. Let's do a comparison to Charlie's swing. All right, really out. That felt better. So I'm about seven balls in. All of a sudden now I'm starting to get a little bit more strike there as well. And that's what I mean about being patient. Don't feel like you're going to hit perfect shots straight away for the first five balls. Give yourself a dozen balls to get really into it. Do some practice swings in between. Don't just machine gun each shot. Back in the day, these boys called it like the vertical drop. Free ride down, Hogan called it. You're getting these hands and clubs to come down, but you're exaggerating it. You definitely want to be this side of the fence than this side of the fence you can play golf from here without any manipulation. From here, you're gonna have to hold back and cut across it, which is a lack of speed and control. So really getting this club inside, getting his hands inside behind you as much as you can for as long as you can. And then from here, we're gonna let go. So let me get onto that. Right, so the second half of it is, now you're kind of trying to drop it into the slot a little bit. What can we do on the second half of it? So. What you can see there with Charlie's swing, from, half, from this halfway down position, what she does, she doesn't keep everything static. What she does, she really fires, get, gets moving, gets her trunk moving, gets all her legs up in the air, really gets out the way of it. Really kind of twisted, and she's, you know, she's a little bit standy-uppy, but she's got to create that speed. And remember, that speed comes from her rotating, obviously, and she's pretty strong, and it comes from her hands as well but she can now. She's behind, she's dropping it in the slot, her hands are behind, she's under plane, what's call it, and now she can really release, which is basically getting this club. If your club's behind you, you're probably not gonna cast it. Naturally, it's gonna wanna sit behind you a bit more, and then from here, you can really unleash, which basically means her body can now twist, and this is the kind of the juggle now, is she's behind, and I'd like you to do the same, She's behind, and then you're twisting and releasing. So you're releasing your hands, you're losing that angle, you're getting the club towards the ball, and then you're twisting your body. 
Now the good news is the majority of that is going to happen for you because the centrifugal force of this club is going to want to get thrown out. That's the secret. Head nice and still, wide, drop under. Now from here you're just going to let everything go, which I mean fire the right pocket, knee up in the air, foot up in the air. And then that's released that club past our face. What that means is you're not twisting too much and holding on to the angle. You can see there with the kind of the right arm and club, there's too much angle between the two. Now you're trying to let go of it. You can see the club is now passing my body. I'm twisting still, but the club is now released compared to that hold on look. Let's feel it. I'm not gonna say it's gonna happen like that. Let's see what happens. Okay, nice and wide, drop it under me and release. That felt better. Remember, practice swings, practice swings, everyone. That felt better. They got the distance up a little bit there as well, which really means like, you know, I would say, do you take that package onto the golf course? Not too sure. You can take an element of that drop in, but I definitely take on the release feeling as well, because the release feeling means your belly button, if you've got an arrow, let's get moving, and then you can release it as well, which means kind of your right hand, if you're right-handed, obviously, get rolling over. Get this thing moving. Get rid of this angle as much as you can. That's where your speed is. Okay, let's give it a go. Charlie Hull, what a great golf swing to, to copy. Okay, nice and wide. Drop, release. Wide first, drop. Didn't hit that quite as well, but it's definitely starting up the right. But remember, gear don't, I probably haven't hit 10 balls yet. Remember, over time, this is what you're trying to build. You're trying to build your golf swing here. Give this club the best chance to get down to the ball because the club doesn't know it's you. It's only reacting to where it is. It's only reacting to gravity, speed, the plane, everything. Key to let everything go is that. Everything after that is kind of just a, a motion that's just gonna let go on you. Right, okay, let's see if I can do a side-by-side -side with Charlie. Let's see if we can do the same type of motion here. Out, steep, down, behind. Let's get behind as much as we can. Let's really try and hit a nice starting, aiming straight, but starting right wide, behind, drop and release. That was my best one today. That's definitely got the speed up. And there's good distance. So. I'm not one for, for copying golf swings all the time, but I think being able to copy, you know, a lady golfer would be quite relevant, isn't it? If I said to you, I'll oh, swing like Bryson DeChambeau or Roy McIlroy, it's going to be pretty difficult. So if this is a video of interest, I'd love you to have along as a subscriber because the channel is here for you to learn about your golf and learn about golf and the golf swing. Because when we're out on the golf course, it's a long time out there, isn't it? It's four hours plus sometimes. Um, and it's gonna go wrong, because golf's really difficult, and it's being able to understand how you can not let the wheels fall off. Because there's been hundreds and hundreds of times where I've stood on the tee and I don't know where the ball's going. And it's a horrible feeling, especially in a golf tournament. Um, so this is why the channel is here, to hopefully for you to understand about your golf swing and understand about the swing. Because I've said to people in the past, your golf swing's always going to evolve sl slightly, hopefully. If you're working at your game, it's always going to change slightly because what isn't relevant now might be relevant in a year's time or so. So thank you for everyone's support. And until next time, we wish you a great golfing week. And more importantly, please stay healthy on and off the golf course. And we'll see you next time. From myself and Trev, sleep again. We'll see you next time. Cheerio.